So this workshop we will be um, trained on standards on book editing, language, and physical features of a book. So to take us through is Mr. Willie Dekuche. He is uh, the managing director for uh, Willie Publishing Services. And he's a very seasoned publisher with a considerable um, experience in the field of publishing. So without wasting about what we going on, we have login again. Because um, I guess we uh, started some minutes way back. So just bear with that. Yeah. yeah. So I uh, will so, hand over to Thank you. Hello. Hi. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues in the profession. It's been a pleasure once again reconnect with you uh, in this training program which is going to be on um, editing standards. Um, as you recollect some ago, the Ghana Book Development Council embarked upon drawing up standards, which guidelines in the... In so today, we're going to um, go into that document and introduce to you the editing uh, aspect of the document. Guide us in the way we go about our professional uh, functions of editing. Should I go on? No, I should. Yeah. yeah, I hope all of you are on the same page with me. Displayed on your screen is the first slide. Are you all in sync with me? Yes, please. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, as I was saying earlier, um, we're going to introduce the editing standards uh, to participants. And to, we, to look at the content of my presentation this morning, attempt a short definition of standard. Then I will look at the editing landscape the GBDC's intervention I'll concentrate on problem areas uh, of editing. Then uh, I will switch on to the physical features of a book, especially the preliminary pages where uh, there are a lot of problems uh, for students in the industry. I'll, I'll main text, back matter, and how to place the elements um, in the um, book that we are publishing. And then with a conclusion. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us launch into the presentation. The first time I came 
into concert or the issue of uh, in our practice of publishing was um, finding class at uh, also at Brooks University where I was um, a student studying publishing during the class. Mr. Robinson, our lecturer, uh, made a point that in binding, make sure with the sheets the word, he put it through the papers, the paper go through all the folios. That is the standard he was introduced. So, Hannah, this force about page numbers having to align and so forth. 20 minutes, he spent the lecture and talked properly. For professor, there is nothing like African, there is only one standard to guide practitioners, and that is the world standard. And that we should aim at achieving the world instead of the parallel interest of, uh, from the third world country. So we should let it go. Um, um, encounter I had with the question of standard was when um, GBDC, in those days it was um, Mr. Amu Joleto, who was the executive director, uh, he and one other staff, you no, know, tells out the question of standards that we in Ghana should do our best to um, do, you know, manufacture our books to international standards. Now, a short definition of what I mean by standard will be, I would say, best, best practice in the uh, profession. And if at international conventions like uh, the Ben Convention, uh, UCC Convention, which have to do with copyright, the Paris rev revisions, all our attempts to uh, guide practitioners as to how to go about the question of standard. Now, as you all know, every publishing house has a house style. And in fact, uh, the house style of Cambridge University has been compiled into a book which is widely used in uh, Britain. And if you uh, are familiar with uh, Judith Butcher's copy editing, and in fact, that is the house style of uh, Cambridge University Press, that's the talking about the UK. But in the USA, the house style of the University of Chicago, that one also has been compiled into a book and it guides the practices there in the USA. And when we were sitting as a committee to draw up standards for Ghana, uh, the unanimous decision was that we should go by the Chicago Manual of Style. And that is what uh, we have adapted for Ghana in the standards that um, we drew up. Now, as I indicated a, a few moments ago, the landscape as far as publishing is concerned, some years ago, um, have some problem. Um, when you take orthography, you will find that some people uh, in the same manuscript, you have a word like organized, spelled I-S-E, which is the British orthography. And in the same document, we have the word organized spelled I Z E. We said in the standard that we should select one of the orthography 
British or American, but uh, never mix the two in the same um, document. And then we notice also that where we have the problem in Ghana, you know, re uh, relates to arrangement of the preliminary pages and other, and other elements. elements. So let's finish um, by looking at what the committee put down as guidelines for the use of the language. So these are the following guidelines that we said writers and editors should um, observe. We said for the pre tertiary that is from primary school up to secondary school, only British English shall be used. So those of you who are into textbooks, make sure that you use the British orthography if you're doing books for primary schools up to secondary schools. However, at the tertiary level, uh, the uh, Ghana standard is saying you can use British or American, but be consistent. In other words, if you choose the British way, go British throughout. If you choose American way, that is spelling with I-Z-E for organized, be consistent. That is the, um, the standard. Now, we said for local language, um, just conform to the local orthography. And if you want, uh, if you want a guideline, then liaise with the Bureau of Ghana Languages. They can advise you as to the current local orthography. Now, those of you doing books in French and other foreign languages, the standard usage uh, should guide you. Yeah, as, as I said, British English shall be used consistently at the pre tertiary level. The allowance may be made for local um, standard variations of English in works of fiction. When it comes to work, works of fiction, um, you can make some allowances. So um, it is also desirable for local words to be consistently put in quote marks or if you like, you can put them in italics. As far as spelling is concerned, in the, in the standard, we are saying there shall be consistency with the chosen orthography. I've, I think I've already explained that. Now, if you are, um, yes, you should um, be very careful if you are, for example, talking about the hospital situation, use the correct register. Um, for example, in medicine, you talk about syringes, uh, you, stethoscope, osmotum, and so forth and uh, so on. Uh, you must be consistent in using the correct register. In the area of idiomatic expressions, um, that's another area where people have problems. Um, we said you should quote correctly. For example, the correct, the correct rendering of the phrase survival of the fittest should be like that, but not survival of the fittest. You know, it's a kind of malapropism. We, 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 we must be very careful about that. You have in Ghana, people say much ado, um, much, much ado about nothing. Uh, but in, in, in the normal Ghanaism, you say much I do about nothing, which is the wrong uh, rendering. The next area where uh, the, the standard has made some recommendation is the use of local words. And we said uh, a local word like aquaba, you just put in quote marks. 
If you like, you can um, render it in italics. But if you put quote marks, either double or single, that is okay. When in the area of slang or pigeon, we are saying you can allow slang or pigeon in fiction. Um, today be today. In uh, Nigeria, they, they will say uh, today, not today. If you have a character saying that, you can allow it, but you put it in code. Or are they come? Are they go come? Are they who? All these things are uh, pigeon, and you are capturing the flavor. These things should be allowed. Now, let's look at the book itself. When we're talking about the book, we're talking about the front cover and the back cover. Then we have the front matter, which we also call prelims. Then we have the main text. Then we have the back matter and the spine. I hope all these uh, terms are familiar to you. And you know what all these uh, uh, terms stand for. Now, if we talk about book cover, there are two categories of book covers. We have the hard cover and the soft cover. The hard cover can have a, a jacket, and this is optional. It is not compulsory that every hard cover should have a jacket. There are situations where uh, you have even the jacket built into the, um, uh, the cover. There are variations uh, as far as uh, book covers uh, are concerned. Now, let's go or zoom in on the front cover, which are the elements which constitute the front cover. Um, first, we have the title. And the title, we can have the main title and then the subtitle. For example, if you take the Chicago Manual of Style, the main title is Manual of Style. Then you have a subtitle, The Essential Guide for Writers, Editors, and Publishers. Now, on the front cover, you can display the uh, author's name, or if it's a book compiled by uh, an editor, that is where it has to be. Then some people, again, this is optional, they will put the name of the publisher on the front cover. If uh, you don't put it there, it doesn't matter. Then uh, you can put the edition, whether it is the 14th edition, 15th edition, that can appear on the front cover. And if it's a children's book, you know, uh, in children's books, uh, you have uh, an illustrator you know, doing the illustrations for you. That is the place where the name of the editor, uh, the name of the illustrator will appear. And if you have a logo, you can put it there. Again, it's optional. Then when, when you come to the back cover, uh, you have the blurb, that is a small synopsis or summary of what the book is all about. And uh, you may have uh, reviews or commentaries or commendation from um, people. You can put them all uh, on the back cover. Then you have your ISBN and barcode or the scan code. Yeah. And then the publisher's logo, all those things. Um, you can uh, uh, put them on the back cover. And for illustration, we're talking about the author's picture. Uh, so, uh, all those things can come at the back cover. Now the spine, uh, the recommended elements should appear on the spine. And these are the main title can come here the author, the publisher's name, and if he has a logo, those things can come there. Let's move into uh, the prelims. That's the front matter. 
Now, we said, if you have a half title, that uh, will be the first page. When you come to the full title page, we're talking about the main title and the subtitle, they should all appear there. And if um, you have the book being translated, the translator's name should come there, the author's name should come there. And if uh, the book is an edited um, book, the editor's name should come there. The illustrator's name should be there, publisher's name, publisher's logo, again, it's optional. And what many people omit is uh, place of publication and year of publication. These things are important for librarians, those who are going to catalog the book. They need all uh, those pieces of information. And it's a help if all these things are provided them. Now, let's go deeper into the elements which should uh, appear on the copyright page. You have your copyright symbol. We said you can you know, say, uh, you can give the symbol and then uh, the author's or the copyright holder's name, or you can uh, write C-O-P-R, that's the short form of copyright. Then you write the name of whoever owns the copyright. The year of publication should appear. As I said, copyright owner's name should be there. The term all rights reserved uh, should also uh, be there. The year of subsequent editions, if that's the second edition or third edition, you can put them all there. Then publishing history. I notice um, people who meet to tell us whether that is a second reprint or third reprint and so forth. It would be nice to have all these details there. Then uh, the name of the publishing house and the supporting agencies should all appear there. And the publisher's uh, house, uh, publishing house, um, the address, the telephone number, the email address is optional. The telephone number is optional too, but I think it is useful because I have had people uh, look at the telephone number I put there and they contact me with jobs. If you have a website, fine, uh, put it there. If um, your uh, children's, if, if it's a children's book, the, letters, the illustrator's name should also appear. Then the ISBN, you can um, write it in segments separated by space or you can use hyphen to indicate uh, the separate items. Now, dedication page. What the Ghana standard is saying, you can say to Amadede or for Amadede. Um, you, can, you can also put the phrase dedicated to, followed by the name of the person to whom the book is dedicated. The next segment after dedication uh, is a table of contents. It is often used for nonfiction books that contain parts or chapters along with their relevant page numbers. In other words, if you are listing the items, the table of contents, put the page numbers against uh, the various elements in the table of contents. Now, when we talk about illustrations, uh, we're talking about tables, maps, photos, figures, diagrams, etc. Uh, you should list all these items. The next segment in the prelims is a forward. Again, it's optional. Some books don't have a forward. Some have. If you have, yes, you should follow uh, the table of contents. And uh, forward, you know, is a text which is written by a person other than the author. The difference between the forward and a preface is that preface 
is written by the author and explains the rationale for writing uh, the book. So the name of the author we are saying in the Ghana standard should appear underneath. Now, the next segment is uh, acknowledgement. Um, this is the author's appreciation of all personal institutions or organizations that help directly or indirectly in the publication uh, of, of the work. So that segment follows uh, the uh, preface. Now, some books have introduction, especially in tertiary books. So following the acknowledgement page, uh, page should be the introduction if you have one. Then after that, you can bring list of uh, abbreviation or acronyms or terms. After that, you can uh, uh, follow it on a different uh, page by list of contributors that will refer to uh, tertiary books or scholarly uh, books. Now, we we'll now zoom in on the main text. After having finished with the prelims, now we are tackling the main text. The main text consists of the following. We have headings, and when we talk about headings, we're talking about the chapter titles and the sub chapter number, the subheadings, the units or sections. Chapter titles must be relevant to the text following them. In other words, make sure that uh, you do your headings properly. If you have exercises and questions, this should reinforce knowledge in the main text. And uh, those of us in education will recognize uh, all those technical words there. Now, with headings, we have uh, running heads um, and then um, footers. Uh, the running heads, they are put at the top. And then you have footers at the bottom of the page. If you have uh, footnotes, if it is helpful, if you have footnotes, bring them to the bottom of the page. Um, in tertiary books, um, some people list these things at the end of the chapter, and you call, you call them end notes. Illustrations. This will, uh, should be well referenced. In other words, if in the text you have footnote one, or no, rather that the diagrams. Uh, if you have a diagram, make sure it is relevant to the uh, text surrounding it. And those of you who will be using uh, technical formulae, all these things should conform to the ISO standard. Now, the question is, where do you put the various items um, in the book? In the front matter, we, we are the, the, the Ghana Standards Board is saying, uh, rather the Ghana Book Development Council's standard is saying that you number the elements in the front matter in Roman numbers. So your half title, that's if you have a half title page, you should start numbering uh, Roman one. If you have a series title or a, a series, that should come as a next segment. The title page should be numbered, that will be number uh, Roman three. But then if you have a, a, a book where you don't have half title, you don't have serious uh, information, then your title page should be uh, Roman one. And then uh, uh, if you follow uh, the guide here, it tells you um, how to go uh, about it. Now, the, the, there's a question as to which side you should put these elements. The previous um, 
you know, slides that I showed you, tells you how fatal patients start uh, on a rectal. And then that page should be backed. You know, I was the vessel of the half title page should be Roman two, and, and and so on and so forth. Now, the list of illustrations you are not tied down to uh, these street rules. It can start on a recto or a vessel page. The list of titles, then you have uh, the list of tables can start on a recto or a vessel. If you have a far forward, you can do it on a recto and uh, verso. But it actually needs if um, you have uh, these things, especially these main elements on the recto page. So you have a sea or space separating uh, the elements. Some books have prologue. Prologue should always start on a recto page. So when you come to the main text, start numbering Arabic. So the first chapter, maybe chapter one, should be uh, Arabic one. But if you come to the first part title, the, the, um, the standard, the Ghana standard is saying, yes, start with number one. In other words, if you have the book in parts, like part one, part two, part three, the part one, which is starting the main test, should be Arabic one, and then you, you follow. And it should be, it has a vessel of the part page should be blank. That's the page two. Do not put any matter there. So you have the part one, um, Arabic one, backed by a blank, then your chapter one will be uh, page three. That's um, Arabic three. If you have um, epilogue, again, uh, you can either start recto or verso, appendix, recto or verso, blah, blah, blah. If you have index, you can start on the recto or verso. Uh, there is uh, an allowance there for you. Now, in, in the introduction to the general book standards of the Ghana Book Development Council, um, we find the raison d'etre or aims specified like this, and I'm quoting, the absence of standards Have a challenge here. Uh, it says upgrade. Just ignore it. Yeah, the absence of standards currently has resulted in practitioners in the book industry adopting their own production standards and methods. We do not conform to the international standards. The establishment of the book industry standards will therefore regulate the industry and make books produced in Ghana conform to national and international standards. Need we add anything further? There is no need. The challenge is with the practitioners, the editors, tab setters, designers, etc. It is our hope that this presentation has given you the hope and confidence. So go ye therefore and be good disciples. I will hand you over to the administrator, Chumasi. Thank you, Mr. Dekute, for that um, presentation. And thank you for all for the cooperation. So we zoom into questions and answers. So if you have any question, or any, you want you need any clarification, kindly um, unmute, raise up your hand, unmute your um, audio and ask your question. Mr. Dekute is here to give us all that we need. Any clarification, any question you have, kindly um, raise up your hand, Mr. Dekute. Who addresses? So, Mr. Nobu, hello. 
and can kindly ask your question. Yeah, thank you very much. Please, I would like to ask if we can uh, have access to the, the slide that was used for the presentation now. Yeah, um, I'm leaving the slides with uh, Ghana Book Development Council. So when you contact Mr. Chumasi, who is in charge of uh, this desk or session, he will let the slides be available to you. You can get copies. Okay, okay thank you very much. Any, any question, please? Yeah. Any? Please go ahead. Hello. 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 Uh -huh. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Nakuti, hi. Hi. And thank you very much for, uh, as usual, delivering. Yeah. Um, on the question of uh, standards, uh, the slide that said, French and other languages, you should use the standard usage. I want to know whose usage, because if it is uh, French and other languages, they would also have standards of usage. And so that place is not clear because do we, uh, I mean, adapt it to Ghanaian usage, even though it's Togolese uh, language? Yeah. Um, in French, in French. It, it, the, the way French is spoken, by the original speakers. That is the standard you should go by. Yeah. There should not be something like West African French or Cameroonian French, but it should be the French French, the standard educated uh, French usage should, should um, uh, be the standard you should use. So don't we think maybe that um, portion should be made clearer for, because just as I'm asking, meant by standard usage, whose? So maybe if we say, uh, I mean, normal French, French usage, I, I don't know whether I'm clear, but I'm trying to uh, uh, bring the attention to it so that people who read, who are not here to know this, will know that the normal international standard French. Okay. Now the other thing is uh, the numbering, starting on the return. Normally you see that people want to, as it were, economize space. So when they have finished maybe a copyright page and then maybe done a dedication, then they start the page one on the verso. But I think it's important to let everybody know that no matter what, we start from the, the rep two. Yes. I hope my, my point is clear. Uh -huh. Yes, I as you can see the on the page, I have displayed um, uh, we. All the pages there, we are saying half titles should always be on a recto. It is being shown there. Title yeah, page, again, that's page three. That's, yeah, excuse uh, me, please. Uh, and even that we are, we are talking uh, um, standard, uh, what do you call it, industry language. But recto and verso to the normal, I mean, average person, they may not understand. Okay. So the simple the recto yeah. right version back. When, uh -huh. when we talk about uh, recto page, that is the page on the right with even numbers. Even numbers appear uh, oh, always on the right hand side. That oh, is the recto of the page. And then odd the, numbers. The uh, odd numbers on the right. Odd numbers on the right all the time. Then when we're talking about um, verso, we are talking about the left-hand side of the page, and there, even numbers are quite appear on the uh, um, verses. So when we say recto is right-hand right -hand side, if you open it, that is the verso of the recto. So just back to, to, to simplify matters, Verso is left hand side of the page. Recto is the right hand side of the page. Thank you. All right, and next, please go ahead with your question. Okay, um, thank you, Senator uh, Chumesi. I also thank uh, Mr. Dekuche for uh, the brilliant uh, delivery. Uh, I want to find out the differences among prologue in introduction and preface and candidate. And can all or two of them be present in a book at a time? 
Yeah, it depends on the book. For example, if it's a book on poetry or a novel, you are likely to have a prologue and an epilogue. So it depends on the nature of the book. But if it's a textbook, you may not find a prologue and an epilogue. So the nature of the book uh, determines whether uh, the prologue is there or an epilogue is there. And um, our presentation is where do you put what? That is the, um, uh, the aim of this morning's presentation. Ennis, are you okay or you want, <laughs> you want some explanation? And we are saying that if you have a prologue, it must necessarily be put on a rectal page. Okay, um, so um, with the okay, let, let me maybe let me share with my understanding the, between um, preface and introduction. Okay, um, the two are written by the uh, writer, mm -hmm. um, and um, I I read or learned somewhere that mostly a uh, preface is is more brief than introduction. And the yes. preface usually covers a page. So when it extends beyond a page, um, it becomes introduction. That means it, it, it it's, um, expands beyond the rationale of the book to talking about um, some of the aspects of the book. Yeah, so that's why I was asking whether these two can be present in a book at a time where the writer writes the preface and at the same time captures introduction of the book yeah um the preface as i've already mentioned spells out the reason for writing the book so usually you know it occupies a smaller space if it is page where well, you know i have seen prefaces which run into uh, two or three pages uh, in the scholarly uh, you know here you can have a preface occupy one page or even two or three pages but compare with introduction introduction is take, taking a big you know a larger survey of the whole book so there are no hard and fast rules about this introduction some people have seen, seen we say chapter one is about this chapter two is about this trying to introduce the whole book to you some also oh, have seen, seen merging, merging preface, preface and introduction. introduction. But what we are saying we is, are saying if you have a book where, where these things are distinct, are distinct, that is preface, then you have introduction. introduction. This is the way you should place them. That is what it is. Uh, non uh, serif. A lot of people use that for any book whatsoever. I remember. Uh, Mr. Deputy will remember somebody, some uh, lecturer brought his book to us to publish at Whaley. And it was all in sans serif. And then he was told that, no, because this is for tertiary, this thing is not for children. And it will be very difficult reading this volume in sans serif, like Calibri, Ariel, and those things. It needs to be put into another font. When you looked at the cost that he had incurred, he said that, no, he wouldn't do it. But then you see, there's a, there's a philosophy behind the like, uh, choosing of the typography. And so I think that maybe uh, GBDC, if it is not something that you have intended, think about uh, the typesetters and designers, because a lot of these people don't know it. And it will help in the reading very much if the right type of font is chosen. Yeah, and, uh, we, we'll take it on board. Uh, but generally, the sans serif, is reserved for texts which are of short duration in reading, like bow stickies, brochures, and so forth. But for texts which uh, demand extensive reading or extended reading, you use the serif type. That is a general rule. Agatha. Yes, hello. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, you have another question. Um, I think that's uh, okay. Uh, 
the the prologue yes um uh, he was asking about the prologue and uh, sometimes uh, people also in fiction put in prologues it's supposed to be an introductory something to the main story no, uh, but the, the, yeah prologue yes something like for example if uh, you take uh, um, no, these Greek writers they are fond of uh, beginning their narrative with a prologue, something like yeah. in, something like introduction. Uh -huh. Usually, it's in poetry. You have long prologue before the main action starts. Then, at the end of the text, you have epilogue, something like rounding everything up. Uh huh. Uh, I just I was just going to say that in fiction these days is not very common, and sometimes it's like readers get agitated; they want to get into the story right away, so you don't often find it. But yeah. uh, sometimes, let's say in the scholarly things, you find them. Okay. Yes. That's my question. So, so if anybody is handling a text where there is a prologue and an epilogue, the Ghana standard is guiding you as to where to put what, whether yeah. on a, a, a recto or a verso. Mm. Yeah. Any I think other I'm question? Okay I think somebody wrote a yes, question. Uh, Sami, have you seen? Yes. Uh, okay. uh -huh. Yes. Can I go on, Sakumesi? Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. My question is um, I, I typed it, but um, it's, if you have endorsements or recommendations uh -huh. and you want to put it in the prelims, where do you place it? It wasn't mentioned in the presentation. Yeah, that's my question. Yeah. Um, you, can create, the, you can create a page. Uh, you, you can appear on the uh, series page. You know, after the full title, there's a blank page. You can put all these recommendations, uh, endorsements over there. Otherwise, after it will be title. blank. Hello? You mean after the half title? No, after the full title page, you can put okay. those elements there. And also on the uh, back of the book, that's a back yeah, you cover. You, you can bring those um, uh, reviews and uh, endorsements there. Okay. After the full title, wouldn't we have the copyright page over there? Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it should be half title. Ha no, half let half me title. go over. Let me go over. Okay. The yeah, half title yeah. has a blank page, which we call series page. Exactly. This, this is where you put those things. After that, you have the full title page on the recto. Yes. Then, if you flip the page, you are on a verso. You can, that is the copyright page. Yes. Are you are you clear now? Yes. Clear. So, so endorsements and reviews you can put on the verso of the half title page if you have. Good. Good. All right. I'm okay with that. Mm. Yeah, and then the, my other submission um, with what Auntie Agatha mentioned, um, GBDC, I, GBDC also organized a program, these workshops, led by Kwabna uh, for designers. Mm. So he talked about font and the typography. Mm. Yeah, so we may want to review that or go back and then uh, get some notes from there. Yeah, he mentioned that clearly. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Th thank you. Is there any question? Any 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 questions? So that we just uh, and we are so sorry for all the uh, the time.